Hi, everyone. Welcome to week 23. Took the last shot in the box until the next week we will be officially starting the first six months on this drug. So this week I lost half a pound. Not the most exciting weight loss in the world. I'm suspecting it is salt. And the reason I say that is someone brought me a Thanksgiving meal, which was very nice of them, part of what they ate. And so my salt intake was higher than it used to be. My team at work had a takeout lunch. So he had DoorDash, which was hilarious. He's out in California, deliver a meal to me. And I ate something that was very high in protein, high in good fats. I felt like I wasn't destroying myself, but probably a lot more salt than I'm used to. I started out the week again, very ups and downs. Immediately, the next day after I took this last shot and then had this video, boom, my weight went down three pounds. And then kind of crept up and it went up and down all week again. That's the second time this week has happened. I'm not sure what's happening, but like I said, I suspect I have a lot of leftovers from other people, like I said, who are being nice to me because I don't have a big family to do. And they just brought me some nice meals. But again, probably a lot more salt than I'm used to. Plus, the other funny thing is I taste salt and sugar much more strongly than I did. And so I could tell it had a lot of salt in it. But we're still continuing to lose inches. I started out, uh, again, losing inches off probably the top half of my body, my waist, and my chest, which is always the first place to do it. I've lost some off of my face as well. I'm noticing that my arms are almost not fat enough to do the injection in the back of my arm anymore, which is good news. But I have lost some weight off of my bottom half, which has always been, every time, the hardest place to lose weight. I would almost get incredibly skinny on top, and then nothing would happen on the bottom half for a long time until I've lost everything. This time, different. I am losing pant size quite readily. In fact, I just, I think I said two weeks ago, I bought new pants. I bought new gym shorts because everything else was way too big on me. And boy, I felt uh, very self-conscious in my new pants because I'm used to wearing bigger clothes, I guess. I wear baggy clothes. I think that a lot of people that are overweight do. And suddenly I had pants that just fit right. Well, now they're baggy again <laughs> and my gym shorts are baggy again. So I am losing weight off of the bottom half. And if you look at my scale statistics, I am losing a solid amount of visceral fat, which is the dangerous fat. And then the subcutaneous fat, is also coming off more. That's easier to lose. That's not going to be the more dangerous types of fat that you have. So good week. All in all, my blood sugar dropped back down to where it was. I had a one day where I had low blood sugar when I got back from the gym, which is how it used to be. Things are still going well, and it's just going to be a rough holiday time if people keep bringing me food. I think that might be the end of it. I hope it is the end of it. I want to go back to my diet. I felt like I had a good pattern there. But it was nice to get a little Chipotle in when I haven't had any for, gosh, I think I haven't really had any since well before the pandemic. So it's kind of nice that someone bought me lunch. I appreciate that. Next March is my next big goal. That's what I'm really focused on. I am thinking, first of all, about stepping up my exercise. I mentioned before that I did step up my exercise, but I think I need to step it up even more. I noticed that on some of the endurance things that I used to be good at, so I used to be good that I could row forever or I could go for a walk forever, but I couldn't do it very fast, but I could go a long time. And my endurance is not good right now. And I suspect it does have a lot to do with this medication. So I'm needing to not just exercise a half hour every day, which is primarily what I'm doing, and start increasing length times, like maybe even try to go an hour a couple of times a week because when I was rowing at the gym this morning, I noticed I wasn't rowing as fast as I used to row and I wasn't rowing as long as I used to row. And I suspect too that if I got on my bike, which I can't do because it's winter, but I would have troubles there too. So I really want to start working on endurance because there's different kinds of fitness levels, right? There's going to be the physical strength. There's going to be your heart health, whether your heart can keep up and your lungs can keep up. That's all doing fine on exercising. But again, I tap out, and that's probably because I have a very regular exercise pattern right now. And th that's primarily the whole focus of where I'm going now is I'm looking at what can I do to ensure success, not only while I'm on Manjaro right now, but what can I do to ex see success when I quit? Eventually, I'm probably going to quit, right? 
it may be at some point this medication might not be available or my insurance won't pay for it or they find out you grow three more eyeballs or something like that and something's going to happen and I have to be prepared for that date and I am preparing now. So I'm looking to the future to see what ideas I can do to make sure that I get the right habits, the right patterns, the everything in place now so that when I eventually do come off this drug or go on some form of low dose of this drug, what can I do to make sure that I stay successful? We have all probably seen the statistics that 66% of the people gain back their weight and more, I think, after two years of being off of this drug. Those are not great statistics. Some people do keep it off, but I bet you they work darn hard at it. But it's not just about hard work. Like I said, I used to eat this diet of 1,500 calories a week, lost barely any weight. Now I'm eating 100 calories less, a little bit different composition, and I lose weight. And when I got used to my prior drug dose, that weight stopped as well. There is something metabolically broken in me, and I'm sure a lot of people who have been overweight get broken. Their bodies are stuck, and they won't lose weight, and they can't lose weight. And I believe it has something to do with diabetes. I believe that it's something to do with fat cells and things that we just don't know why exactly this happens. But what happens when that drug is ended for me if it ever ends? Now, my big theory is that the drug is going to get some other form of drug. There's going to be a pill. There's going to be a low-dose pill. There's going to be something that they're going to give people that's going to be a lot cheaper, a lot easier to take, and it's going to be not an off-ramp, but it's going to basically keep enough in the system for you so that you can keep off the weight that you've lost. But until then, until I know what that is, I have to focus a great deal on this. And I noticed that when I, I buy a lot of Kindle books, I'm very much into reading books. I've been buying a lot of cookbooks lately. And I thought it's funny that I almost have this food ahedonia, which ahedonia means like it doesn't really give you joy. I'm at this point where I have food ahedonia where I don't really care much what I eat. So I'm eating eat really healthy because I just don't care that much. I, I always think it's kind of funny when my friends go, well, where do you want to eat out? And I'm like, dude, I don't want to eat. I don't care. I'm just here to hang out with you. I don't care what I eat. Not anymore, or not at least for now. But I'm looking at cookbooks, and they're all healthy, high protein, and I'm trying out new recipes. And I believe in the back of my head, the whole reason I'm very interested in it right now is not because I care right now, but I know that when I go off on either training wheels or off on my own, I want to know how can I eat healthy and still enjoy what I'm eating and not go back to the way I was. Now, the way I was was weird. It wasn't necessarily bad. I didn't eat entire cakes. I didn't go out to eat to restaurants very much. I never did do much in the way of restaurants because I always felt I was broke and overweight. And the number one thing you can do when you're broke and overweight is not go out to eat because it kills both things. But, but what I would have is maybe I would cook a steak and I would just eat a lot of steak and pretty much nothing else. Or maybe I'd make myself a big bowl of pasta and then that would be my meal. I used to eat just sort of single item things. Then I ate a lot of it, but I ate only one thing. I, I'm not much of a oh, I don't know, adventurous eater, I guess I should say. I never really was into that. But I ate too much, way too much. I, I see how much my serving sizes are right now, and I'm thinking about that as well. So I'm looking into cookbooks. What can I cook that would be healthy soups, healthy sandwiches, things that I could eat, and keep my weight off? Is there, is there a way I can at least do my part in this, even if my body is broken to an extent right now? And my question is, is will my body always be broken? If your stomach shrinks, if your blood sugar gets better, are you going to come out of this being much healthier and much more able to maintain and lose your weight? Like I said, the statistics aren't positive. So I'm doing everything I can. The other part of it, too, is I'm thinking, what can I do to ensure I get the proper portions? Now, right now, I'm logging my food into my net diary app. I am measuring everything. I have a scale and then I have hanging on my refrigerator measuring cups. So I measure everything. I make sure that I don't put unlimited amounts of margarine or butter on something. I don't 
eat unlimited amounts of rice or pasta. Even when I had Chipotle today, I immediately cut it up into thirds. I had a burrito bowl and ate a third of the burrito bowl. Before, I would just eat the whole burrito bowl. So I am doing better, but how can I ensure I put guardrails in place so that when I no longer have this drug to help me with this, I maintain the good habits I'm learning now, and I'm trying to enforce my good habits right now so that they are habits. So when I get off of this drug, I am just normally doing these things. I don't want to go back to drinking Diet Pop. I don't want to go back to eating the foods I ate. So what kinds of things can I do to ensure I maintain these habits? The other part is the exercise. I want to ingrain exercise as such a part of my day that I I wouldn't even think about not exercising during the day. I'm not there yet. My closest friend, she is that way all the time. So we go to the gym together because it helps reduce the cost when we train together. And that's been great for me and great for her. She's been doing great lifting weights and and building her strength. And she's seen a ton of improvements. I used to be the person, like, if we bought birdseed, she likes to feed her birds, right? I would be the person who carried the 40-pound bag of birdseed up her very steep driveway. Now she's just pulling it out of my trunk and carrying it up herself. She has gained a lot out of this. But she also naturally exercises every day. So let's say it's Wednesday. It is Wednesday. And we go to the gym very early. She'll just say, oh, hold on a minute. I'm exercising. I'm like, but we're going to go to the gym in a half hour. So then we go to the gym and we work out on strength training. Then I'll talk to her later and say, what you up to? Oh, I, I'm going for a, an hour long walk. She is active all day long and it is just a natural part of who she is. I'm not that person. What did I do? I went to the gym. I, I lifted weights during the time I was at the gym and then I sat and worked all day. And now I'm doing this video exercise, going for walks. It's just not a natural part of my life. Reading books, playing on my computer, those are natural parts of my life, but not exercise. And so in the next year, can I turn this around so that it is? And so that's the other second uh, focus point of my life is can I make exercise better? And the other part I'm researching is in a year with my age and my height and weight and everything like that, How much should I be eating of protein, carbs, and fiber? I know what I'm doing now because, again, I want to ensure that my digestive system works properly, that I don't lose any muscle while on this drug. But what is the accurate number? So I'm going to start making sure that I keep doing those things, you know, getting my macros when I'm done with this phase of my study. The other part, you know, in just doing some research, and I've been listening to a lot of people on YouTube and reading a lot of blogs and seeing what people say about it, is that when they leave this drug, they first of all have to work with your doctor. You don't quit cold turkey. Things that can happen if you just quit the drug is your blood sugar could spike, that all the benefits that basically you gained out of this will happen. A lot of people get their hunger back. It takes a while to get it out of your system. They feel like the half-life of this drug, which means essentially half of the level of the drug that you took takes a week to leave your system, which is why you take it every week. But basically in a couple of weeks, this this drug is out of your system. What's going to happen at that point? So what they do is they trickle you down just like you stepped up in dose, 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 dose. Now you're going to step down slowly on this drug and monitor your blood sugar, monitor your health to make sure that all the gains that you had with, like I said, my labs and everything else, continue to stay. And then you work with the doctor. My doctor said that maybe when I'm off this drug, if I'm still having blood sugar problems, metformin will be the drug that he'll suggest, which is used to treat PCOS, which is something that women get when they're having trouble conceiving or um, having (laughs) a lot of women problems. But it is primarily to to reduce your blood sugar. It also has some other side effects that they're starting to recognize that it might lead to healthier living too. But he said that basically when you're done with this phase of it, he goes, I'm liking metformin for you. So that is his plan for when I get there. Again, I think deep in my heart that there is going to be a pill. It's going to be cheaper. It's going to be more readily available. And there will be low dose. So instead of taking a shot where you jump up in this GLP and then all week long it it, it ramps down, 
I think that there's just going to be a pill that is just going to keep you pretty solidly low level all the time. And that's going to be a lot better. But again, you know, we have to see if it gets approved by the FDA and all the things that might happen along the way. But I fundamentally believe that's what's going to happen next. But what can I do to do that? So I'm going to say, you know, the third thing is, is work with my doctor to make sure that I come off of this drug safely, that hopefully my blood sugar doesn't get too high. I fundamentally believe my blood sugar went high because I had too much weight on myself. My, my pancreas seems to be working. I seem to produce plenty of good insulin and it's keeping my blood regulated right now without any help. So I don't fundamentally feel like my blood sugar is broken as much as my weight was broken. Then the next step is, is I'm going to start trying to change my lifestyle. This is the fourth point. Is I want to change my lifestyle into an active, healthy person who is thinner. And so the first step of me doing that is, first of all, I'm getting rid of all my overweight clothes. I, all my larger clothes, as soon as I grow out of a size, they're all going to Goodwill. So I'm trying to make that cliff harder for me to grow back in size. If I go back in size, I'm going to have to buy all new clothes. I'm going to have to spend a lot of money I don't want to spend. And so I'm going to make it as difficult as humanly possible. I'm changing the way I grocery shop so that I no longer go and buy certain things. I'm going to have a definitive grocery shopping list that I buy when I go to the grocery store so I don't buy foods that are bad for me. And the other part is I'm going to start trying to have bigger adventures. I started thinking today a little bit about big hikes I want to do. I've always wanted to do a significantly long bike ride that involves uh, camping. I have a small backpacking camp tent and I have small things and I would love to do one of these trails that's hundreds of miles long. So how can I start gearing my fun activities around being thin? My trainer, she is one of these adventurers, and she would never gain weight because she is always going on grand hikes and hiking up mountains and going on long bike rides or rollerblading uh, events all over the world. She just did a rollerblading event in Germany. She's very active. And so if she were to gain weight and she was not going to be fit, her entire life is built on her being fit. The people she hangs around with for fun. They go to a park and one of them comes up with an exercise routine they do in the park. That's what they do for fun on a Saturday. That is not my Saturday and that's not what I do for fun. How can I gear my life, maybe not quite like what she does, but more like what she does so that everything is focused on me being fit and me doing that. And so I think that's when you're going to have to look for yourself. The fifth thing that I looked at when trying to fix your life for the future is the mental game. Do you eat because you're stressed? Do you eat because you're bored? Do you eat because your family around you eats and maybe you're the mama and you cook your family meal and everyone comes together at your dinner plate and you just join in? You're going to have to tackle those things. You're going to have to figure out schemes about it. I was a boredom eater. And so I ate just because I was like, it's time to eat. What kind of fun thing I could eat today? Oh, let's have a steak or let's eat a bowl of popcorn or let's eat this other thing I shouldn't be eating or let's go to McDonald's or something like that. It was not a stress thing for me and it wasn't a family thing for me. It was really just me going, I don't know what I feel like. I don't feel like eating what's in my fridge. Let's go find something more fun to eat. I'm going to have to tackle that. And so I think for you, when you're looking at your life, you're going to have to start thinking, what got me here? What got me into this place where I maybe drank too much or I drank Diet Coke too much or I ate too much? And you're going to have to start tackling those things right now. Again, I, I suspect that I'm going to be on this drug for another year. And after that point of being on the drug in another year, like I said, something is going to happen. I'm not sure what, but maybe it's low dose or something like that. What can I do to get rid of the mental games that I played with myself that led me to this point where I got here. Now, one great thing in my life that you're going to have to take a look at in your own life is I have a very supportive friend. I have a very supportive trainer. And I have very supportive coworkers who are just cheering me on. So I don't have people in my life trying to get me to go back to eating what I did. And I've looked at videos. I've watched some YouTube videos where people were like, 
oh, you used to be so fun to go out with, and now you're just a giant bore. You're terrible. They're going to have hard times. It reminds me of when people get out of prison, and then they go back to their home, and they're still the same people they hung out with who got them into trouble and into prison in the first place. I think that if you have people who are egging you on to not be healthy, to not exercise, to not lose weight, to eat more than you should eat, it's going to be a struggle for you. You're going to go back into the same habits again. When I belonged to Weight Watchers ages ago, I would just listen to parents all day long. Well, my kids eat this, or my husband eats that, or my wife eats this, and I can't resist. I don't bring cookies into the house, but my wife always brings in cookies. I have a friend. Her husband always brings home junk food, like a hamburger and a, and a shake and a sundae or something like that. And no matter how many times she begs him to not do that, he does. Because I think he thinks, oh, you're just saying don't do that because you're trying to lose weight, but you secretly deep down inside, you really want this. And you might, but you also know what's better for you. How are you going to either inoculate yourself against that, not telling you to get rid of your family and friends because they're very important to us, but what kind of techniques can you use to say no to them? Well, honey, I know you want me to have this Sunday because you're just such a nice, sweet guy, which is true, but you don't want me to die. You want me to live a long life with you, and if you keep bringing this to me and I keep putting on weight, I'm not going to have a long life with you. You won't have a long life with you. Some technique that you're going to have, but each of us are going to have individual struggles you're going to have to fight with, and that's my five-point plan of what I'm doing right now to try to ensure that in a year, when I ramp off of this drug, I, I have success. It's easier, I think. You know, if you're like on Jenny Craig or you're on Weight Watchers and you weigh 100 pounds too much, you'll go a decade, right, losing the weight on Weight Watchers. And so you will get time to work on your behaviors and work on your habits and do better job. This, this drug makes it happen so fast that you have to come up with a plan much more quickly. It's not going to be you spending seven years losing weight and building good habits. This is going to be you spending two years or a year and a half, in my case, losing weight rapidly and then having to live the rest of your life maintaining it. And so this is going to take quicker strategy than I think most people are used to when they're planning on losing weight. All right, everyone. Thanks so much. I appreciate you watching the video. I hope this has been helpful for you. This is such an extraordinary journey, and I hope that you are having an extraordinary journey too. Whatever it is that you're trying to do, all of these points and all the points I try to bring out every week are good for you, whether you're taking a drug like Manjaro or Zempic or something like that, or you're just trying to lose weight on your own. You're always, no matter what way you're losing weight, going to have to think of an exit strategy. So I hope that it gives you some food for thought and start to think about your own exit strategy and what you plan on doing too. Appreciate you watching. Please remember, a better life in small steps.com is my home site. The links are going to be in the notes. And you can always email me or message me on the video channel to, to tell me what's going on with you or what struggles or successes you're having. Thanks so much for watching. Have a wonderful week.